The rules set for the 2024 Pokemon World Championships have been announced. And, of all the rules that the Pokemon Company could have picked, these sure are some of them. Enough. Reggie. For the first time in Scarlet and Violet, the powerful box legendary Pokemon like Kyogre and Groudon will be legal. But hold on, before you start yelling about how legendary spammers are ruining the game, it's gonna be okay. Because you are only allowed to run one restricted legendary on your team of six at a time. Which makes for an interesting problem. Every one of these broken Pokemon are vying for your attention, begging you to pick them over their potential competitors. So the question becomes, which one should you choose to send your team around? That's what we're gonna cover in today's tier list. Keep in mind, this context is only only for single restricted. Some restricted Pokemon get much better when you're allowed a second restricted, or a third, and some get worse. So, without further ado, Let's get into it. Uh, Mewtwo is not very good. It's weird to say that, because obviously he's a good Pokemon, but he's not good in the context of Restricteds, where you only get to pick or choose one, sometimes two. If you want a fast, special attacking, you know, psychic type, you can just play Calyrex. There's really nothing that Mewtwo does better than Calyrex Shadow Rider. The only thing it has going for it is that, is that it has good coverage, but Calyrex is a ghost type, and ghost types really good at hitting things neutrally. So, yeah, I mean, we're gonna put Mewtwo not starting very strong. He's going in D tier. He's not weak. There's just nothing he does better. Uh, next up, we have Lugia. So Lugia is defensive, and we're going to see this a lot with defensive restricteds. They're not worth your restricted slot. You really want your one restricted to put out a lot of output, a lot of damage, a lot of something. Lugia, as a defensive restricted, doesn't really do that. He excels at, at outlasting, out bulking things, and that style of play gets a lot harder when your opponent has a nuclear missile. Like, put it this way, if you could have the bunker or the nuclear missile, like, which one's gonna work out? Sure, the bunker will live, but everything outside of it's not gonna go so hot. So <laughs> that's kind of how these restricteds end up. So Lugia's gonna go in D tier, again, just... It also, he just doesn't even have very good defensive typing. Now, Ho-Oh, kind of similar to Lugia, but has a little bit more offensive pressure. It He has access to Sacred Fire, which is a really strong move. Uh, it really should have gotten a Revival Blessing. It just would've made sense in the lore. It would've made it an option better Pokemon, but probably not broken. I don't know why they didn't do it. Also, he's gonna go in C. Little bit better than Lugia, because he actually has some pressure. Now, Kyogre, I know people aren't gonna agree with this. I think Kyogre's a C-tier Pokemon. I think the issue with Kyogre is number one, Suddenness is a stronger weather than than Rain is right now. There are multiple Protosynthesis Pokemon that you play just assuming you'll never get Sun. And now, with Groudon and Koidon, who we'll talk about soon, you just get it for free! You get a broken Pokemon and the Sun for your Fluttermane, and it just doesn't really cost you very much. Uh, because of that, Kyogre's gonna be fighting a Weather War a lot, and the other thing is, as we talked about in the video I posted last week, there's just such a volume of Pokemon that'll just randomly be on a team that beat Kyogre. And we have Iron Bundle that'll outspeed and free dry, we have Water Ogre Pond, we have, to a lesser extent, all the Ogre Ponds, who are just good, hard-hitting grass types, and we have Raging Bolt. Raging Bolt is going to be everywhere in this format, and Kyogre just, you have to jump through so many hoops to, to play with him, and at the end what you get is a powerful spread move, so at that point, just play one of the Pokemon with powerful spread moves that don't require to jump through a bunch of hoops! That's how I feel at least. So, Kyogre, C tier. Like, in between B and C, but C tier. Now, Groudon, this one's going to be interesting. Like I just said, Sun is really valuable right now, so there's a lot of Pokemon that really, really benefit from Groudon's Sun. So because of that, I expect it to see a lot of play. The tension is going to be whether Koridon or Groudon end up being the stronger option. Now, Koridon is kind of anti-Kyogre in a way, in that even if you do end up losing the back and forth Sun and Rain Weather War, you don't take too much from Water Spokes, you resist it. So Koridon's probably better at beating Kyogre, but with these Sun-style teams, you really want to stagger your speed tiers, and a lot of the Protosynthesis Pokemon are kind of fast, right? So you don't want to end up with with, you know, your fast Fluttermane, your fast Chiyu, and your fast Ogre Pond, and your fast Koridon, because it's gonna make your team really one-dimensional. So having a slow, bulky Pokémon to kind of go in between is probably pretty strong. So we're gonna put him in A tier. It's probably worth noting here that all of the physical legendaries get a big, big, big boost, because Clear Amulet on a physical legendary is absolutely broken. They already do so much damage, making them harder to mitigate is just ridiculous. I'd, it's insane. Next up, we have Rayquaza. Now, everyone's like, oh, you know, Oh, choice Band, Terra Normal, Extreme Speed, Rayquaza, we did it, boom, boom, just with Chin Pao, just like with Dragonite. But that's the thing, just like with Dragonite, these legendaries have an opportunity cost, you only get one. Rayquaza isn't actually better at doing that than Dragonite. Dragonite, 134 attack, Rayquaza, 150. So you're getting a lot of extra attack, but you're losing inner focus, and that's what makes E-Speed Dragonite so oppressive. It means you're not getting intimidated by Incineroar, and means you're not getting faked out. Rayquaza is always gonna be able to get faked out, and if you don't want to get intimidated, you have to run Clear Amulet. But at that point, you're losing the chance to run an item like Choice Band, or, you know, Assault Fest, or something like that. Like, Dragonite gets the option. 
option of doing. And because of that, I think it's worse at the roll. And even if it was a teeny tiny bit better, which I guess you could argue, but I think you'd be wrong, it's not worth your slot. Just play Dragonite and then another Broken Legendary. Like Rayquaza doesn't do anything significant enough. Like, yes, it does get airlock, but you're, you're spending your restricted slot on arguably better Dragonite. And to stop Sun, and then you'll die to the Flutter main anyway? I don't know. I think it's really bad. Please don't play Rayquaza. So the origin form of Dialga trades 20 points of Dialga's attack for special lift defense. Dialga, not a physical attacker, not missing those points, so it's essentially a 20 point stat buff. But he has to hold the form changing item, Adamant Crystal, which gives a 1.2 times boost to dragon and steel type attacks. So it's a trade off. You are forced into a damage boosting item uh, in exchange for slightly better stats. Now, a lot of times Dialga and Palkia would hold their exclusive item that gives those 1.2 times boosts anyway. So if you're playing a set where you wanted that already, like say some kind of tr offensive trick room set, yeah, I mean, he's strictly better if you want an assault. Salt Fest assessment or something like that, then base Dialga is better. So it's really a question of what's better having a defensive item or 20 more points in special defense. I think almost always Origin Dialga will be better, but there may be a corner case where, you know, you really need safety goggles or you really need a citrus berry or something. So we're going to put both of these in B tier, uh, but with the caveat that it's pretty, I'm not going to like order the tiers, but just keep in mind that almost always Origin Dialga better than base Dialga. All right, so Palky, it's the same idea but this time it's in speed as opposed to in special defense. Making Palkia faster, making it 120 base speed Pokemon is really strong. 120 is a lot. I mean, as we'll see, it's not crazy crazy, especially in restricted formats, but it is a lot. It does still underspeed Fluttermane, which is a huge deal for a dragon type like Palkia, but Palkia is pretty bulky. Water and Dragon is generally pretty good defensive typing, uh, so this may see play. I think that those 20 points in speed, and once again that restriction of needing that held item, uh, really does mean that Palkia origin form and Palkia base form are a little less similar than Dialga and Dialga origin form, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's teams where Dialga origin form is just like a good solid Pokemon, uh, and Palkia serves a different role. Palkia is often a Trick Room Pokemon, just because, you know, good bulky typing, gets access to Trick Room, uh, and that's kind of its niche. I think Palkia Origin Form with 120 base speed probably won't often be wanting to run Trick Room, which means its only role is really that of a powerful special attacker, and if that's all you're doing, all of a sudden you're competing with a lot of Pokemon, I can't really, you know, conceive of a situation where I'm building in my team and I say, okay, I want my, my Restricted to be a powerful special attacking legendary that doesn't offer too much in the way of support, uh, but it just does a lot, a lot of damage. And choosing Palkia Origin Form over something like Calyrex Shadow Rider or even Miraidon, but Miraidon often just provides support as well. So I'm actually gonna put Origin Form in D, in C tier, and Palkia in. B. Not because I think objectively Palkia Origin Form is a weaker Pokemon, but because I think that Palkia Origin Form does not offer anything unique uh, that will make you want to play it. Whereas I can see a situation where you want Palkia base form as like a slower, bulkier Pokemon. I'm just going to get this out of the way. Both the Garatinas kind of suck. Garatina Altered Form has the same defensive Pokemon problem that Lugia and Ho-Oh have, uh, but <laughs> cranked up to 11. Yeah, this thing's highest attacking stat is 100, which is just not going to cut it as a, as a legendary Pokemon. On that you're trying to build your team around, which in single restricted, your team is built around your one guy. That's really important to emphasize here. Uh, so he's going to go in D. You're going to see some weird, cool, best of one teams that stall people out with how bulky he is. They're a trap. They're trying to trick you. Do not fall for it, please. God. Next, uh, Altered Form, or, uh, Origin Form me. Better. You know, 120s, pretty bulky still. Uh, the problem really is, Pokemon that have, you know, 120 in special attack, 120 in attack, way worse than, you know, if 20 of those points removed to one or the other, if you picked one. So he kind of suffers from a wasted stat problem. He needs to hold the Grishius core to be in that form. Again, strong Pokemon in a vacuum, not strong enough here. Now, next we have Reshiram. He has kind of the same issue as the origin form Palkia, where, yeah, he's a strong special type, special attacking dragon. You're not really begging for a fire type. I mean, we have so many good non restricted fire types. We have, you know, we have Chiyu, we have Incineroar, we have Fire Ogre Pond. So if you just want a hard hitting fire type, there's really not a reason to waste your restricted slot on Reshiram. Zekrom is kind of the same story, but with physical attackers. You know, if we want a strong physical attacking dragon type, we can get Koridon, who has extra synergies with the sun, as opposed to being this kind of self-sustaining, hard-hitting Pokemon. So he's also going to go in D tier. Now, with these two, Q-Room Black and Q-Room White, they hit so 
goddamn hard. Black has 170 attack, white has 170 in special attack. That is a stupid number. And the big thing with them this time around uh, is they're gonna get access to snow buffs. They're both ice types. And as we've seen uh, very recently, the buffs to ice articles uh, with snow is pretty potent. Articuno, one of the worst legendaries ever, won a regional off the back of how powerful snow support is. So I kind of believe a snow team will show up with these two. Like, they're going in C tier, not because I think they're like gonna be good, but I can see something happening. Like there is a synergy there worth exploring at the very least. Also worth noting, ice typing is very valuable because of how popular dragons have gotten a lot of good grass types. Uh, and we're just adding a whole bunch of new dragons. So who knows? We're not, I'm not gonna bother with uh, the baby forms of the Zacian and the Zamazenta. I just can't see every time they use them. Now, if you, if I, you had asked me to make this tier list, three months ago. I would have said Zacian, he got nerfed pretty bad, but I think Zacian and Gouging Fire are best friends. I think they go really well together. Now they do share a ground type weakness, but there's not really a ground type that outspeeds either of them and Zacian threatens any of the ground types that are popular right now. Gouging Fire being able to, you know, reset Intimidate drops on Zacian, uh, get, use Howl to get him, get him his Intrepid Sword boost back if he has to switch out. Gouging Fire hits the steel types that Zacian doesn't love. So I actually think Zacian's still going to be really good. I'm kind of put him in A tier, honestly. I think he's going to be pretty freaking strong. Uh, next we have Koridon. We discussed Koridon a little bit with Groudon. Uh, he does so much damage. He is so fast. There's all these Pokemon, Fluttermane, Raging Bolt, uh, that have been broken uh, since they became legal in Scarlet and Violet. And that's despite the fact that they have a ability that half the time they aren't using. Suddenly, with Koridon, they're using them. So here you go, everybody. Here's your broken statted 135 base speed, crazy attack, really broken signature move, ability that is both a protosynthesis boost and drought, uh, all in one, who also buffs your already broken Pokemon. So I'm putting him in S tier. I, as I was talking, and convince myself he's probably better than Groudon. Now, Miraidon, very similar. Not quite the same in terms of how it's going to support things because the because the future Pokemon just aren't as strong as the past Pokemon. But the thing is, Koridon, he gets his boost, but he isn't a fire type. He's not stacking Ori Calcum boost plus Sun boost plus stab bonus. Miraidon is stacking the Hadron Engine damage boost plus electric terrain plus electric stab. So this guy just has two multipliers built in. Like, I, I need you to imagine that. Miraidon has the same special attack stat as Fluttermane. It's 135. Imagine if Fluttermane came with Terra Fairy, Terra Fairy and Life Orb built into it. Before it's held item, before you Terrastalize, Miradon just has that. It blows things up. Miradon's an S tier. God help us. Terrapagos. Now, Terrapagos is an interesting Pokemon. Its Terra form is obviously really, really strong. Gets those huge boosts. Terra Star Storm, when you're Terrastalized, is a really powerful little move. Uh, however, he is a lot of commitment. You're probably gonna wanna play him with Calm Mind, which means you need a few turns to get him going. Uh, and he only really gets his super broken form if you Terra. And if you don't Terra him, him in his like middle form, his little weird wiggly turtle form, really isn't worth your restricted slot. So if you are going to play with Terrapagos, you need to make sure your team is built around ensuring that you are okay with committing your Terra to Terrapagos basically every time you play him. That being said, if you do that and you get the payoff, you're getting something really powerful. Terra Star Storm is neutral against everything. It's 100 base power. Terrapagos in his big form has crazy high special attack and you're getting calm mind boosts on him. It's, it's worth, it's worth the time. Will he be broken right now? No, probably not. I think he probably gets overwhelmed by the other powerful restricteds, because if you've noticed, all the restricteds that I'm saying are really, really strong are just purely powerful offensive Pokemon. I think he might be better in two restricted formats, where you get the chance to, you know, kind of offset the, the fact, the lack of immediate pressure he puts on with your other restricted, so we'll put him in B tier for now, but when I make the two restricted tier list down the line, expect that to go up. Now, Lunala is an interesting Pokemon, traditionally a very strong Trick Room Pokemon because its ability Shadow Shield, which is basically multi-scale, uh, makes it really hard to remove it right away, and it just hits pretty hard. Uh, that being said, if you compare, I think it was Jody uh, very recently compared Lunala's stats to Raging Bolts, and they're really similar. Uh, I don't know if you're getting enough power out of Lunala by itself for it to be worth your single restricted slot. Like I said, there's a few restricteds that get a lot better in double restricted because they're more a little more supporty, a little more utility based. I think Lunala is one of them, but it's at least as good of a trick room Pokemon as Dialga and Palkia are. So I'm gonna put it in B tier. 
Uh, in a similar note, we have Solgaleo. Solgaleo, uh, his big thing has always been that he has full metal body, uh, essentially clear body with a few extra perks, and that's been quite strong. A restricted Pokemon that can't be intimidated, like I said, with their crazy high stats, very, very powerful. That being said, there's a few things going wrong for him right now. Uh, Steel and Psychic, bad type when Incineroar is popular, not very good typing when we're, I'm expecting teams to be having lots of sun boosted, sun boosted fire type attacks running around, uh, not very good when uh, I think a lot of ghost types are running around or a lot of powerful ghost type attacks like Fluttermane and as we'll see soon, Kyrick Shadow Rider. So I really don't expect him to be too, too popular. So I'm going to put him in C tier. Again, he, ha he has stuff going for me when he gets access to Trick Room. He doesn't have to commit Clear Amulet to his item slot. Uh, to be immune to intimidate, but the fact that all the other powerful restrictions now get access to clear amulet uh, makes his niche a little less powerful. He is pretty bulky, so maybe I'm I might be underselling the bulky Pokemon. It's a lot easier to see when a offensive Pokemon can be broken because it just you know blows things up. And defensive Pokemon, it you know it's we're gonna see the full picture. Maybe I'm selling the defensive guy short, but we'll see. Uh, next up we have Necrozma as a Duskmane. So this guy is pretty similar to Solgaleo. Essentially, the way it works is the Necrozma Duskwing and Dawnwing's forms are just slightly. Uh, retuned stats of Solgaleo and Lunala you share the same typing as they do, and they replace their ability with something called Prism Armor, uh, which means that you take three fourths the damage you would normally take from a super effective hit. Now, that sounds pretty strong, but for Solgaleo, as we said, a big part of what makes him as a steel, psychic, physical attacker strong is the fact that he gets access to super, essentially super clear body. Uh, so losing that and letting yourself be intimidated is a really big deal. So I'm going to put him... I'm gonna put him down here. Next, we have Calyrex Ice Rider. Uh, both the Calyrexes are just kind of broken. If you look at their stats, they look like they were, you know, fan made, like somebody was trying to make the most broken, cool, legendary ever. <laughs> That's kind of what they are. Uh, they start with crazy base stats. Their abilities stop berries, which means a lot of defensive counterplay goes away. And if they kill one thing, they start to snowball. So, you know, if you get one boost on these things, on like a frailer Pokemon, even if it resists the attack, you're going to start doing 80, 90% or even just knocking it out. Uh, Calyrex Ice Rider uh, is the bulkier, slower variant. He is like the de facto Trick Room Restricted. Uh, if you noticed, none of the other Trick Room Restricteds cracked B tier. That's not because I think that Trick Room is going to be weak, but it's because I can't really see a really obvious reason why your Trick Room Restricted wouldn't just be Calyrex Ice Rider. He's going to be nuts. Again, as an ice type, maybe some people try some snow stuff with him now that that's around. Uh, you'll notice our other three of our other four SNA tier Pokemon get hit super effectively by Glacial Lance. Uh, he just kind of does it all. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. This guy, uh, Necrozma Dawnwings, he's like, he is slightly better uh, than this one because it's like there's an argument for whether Shadow Shield or Prism Armor is a better defense ability. The answer is Shadow Shield. But it is slower, which could be important because uh, Lunala is often a Trick Room Pokemon and Duskwings has a higher special attack, so it makes it a better special sweeper when uh, once you get your Trick Room up. Uh, next, we have Zamazenta. Now, Zamazenta got a big buff compared to Sword and Shield. It got He got the same nerfs as Zacian did, but he got Body Press, and I think Zamazenta, if he was given the option of having those nerfs changed and getting Body Press or keeping his old stats and not getting Body Press, he'd pick getting Body Press because he has crazy defenses, as you know. He is fine. He's again a setup Pokemon, kind of like Terrapagos. Not as committal as Terrapagos is, but again, defensive, wants to do utility stuff, might do some Iron Defense Body Press stuff occasionally. Probably wants to do like Iron Defense Body Press, Snarl, or Wide Guard and Protect. It's fine. Like, he has lots of stats, so it'll be hard to remove. Uh, a big issue with him is that he doesn't get access to leftovers when he's in this form. So actually, I know I said I wouldn't talk about uh, the base forms of these two, but there's a chance that if you want to do Iron Defense Body Press stuff with this Pokemon, that the non-Rusted Shield form is stronger, so you have access to leftovers for recovery. But even then, I don't think it'll be very good. Once again, another Pokemon that I could see revisiting uh, when we hit two restricted format, but right now. Uh, finally, we have Calyrex Shadow Rider. Uh, this guy invalidates Mewtwo. He kind of invalidates Giratina. No, he's not as directly, uh, but there's a lot of a lot of what happened here. Why every other psychic type legendary besides Ice Rider, for example, is in C or D tier is because of Calyrex uh, Shadow Rider. All the same thing I said about Calyrex Ice Rider are true for this guy as well. A broken spread move, uh, whatever. Except the thing about Calyrex Shadow Rider is he's just blisteringly fast. Right now, a, lot, a very popular moveset is Choice Scarf Adamant or Shifu Rapid Strike. Timid, Max speed Calyrex Shadow Rider just outspeeds that, no questions asked, you have to be jolly. That kind of speed creep really changes the way you have to play the game. He also just has good utility options, like people run Trick Room Calyrex sometimes, they run Will-O-Wisp, sometimes they just run Choice Specs like Astro Barrage. And the really nuts thing is, Calyrex Ice Rider and Calyrex Shadow Rider both have broken spread moves, Glacial Lance and Astro Barrage. But Calyrex Shadow Rider gets Two, because he also gets Expanding Force, and he's a fragile Pokemon that is four times weak to Sucker Punch, so he already likes priority blocking, so you just slap an Indeedee next to that guy, and... <laughs> 
He's ridiculous. He is S tier, S tier, S tier. If you want to figure out an archetype to master and just play the entire format, I strongly recommend just picking up Calyrex Shadow Rider Hyper Offense. But here's my list. This is not objective power level in a vacuum. This is how I feel the format is going to pan out. That's why Pokemon like Kyogre, who are obviously objectively some of the strongest legendaries ever, it's just not really a feel that's good for him. So hope you liked the video. Subscribe. Bye. <laughs>